the people's platform a very good evening and welcome to the show we're discussing the democratization of the practice of higher education as a national resource and joining me for the first time on the show is professor sumathi sivamohan uh, from the university of peradeniya she's also a filmmaker a writer a theater practitioner and a poet good evening to the show madam yes. lovely to have you here yes. with us me too yeah um let's talk about the um higher education system in sri lanka there are a multitude of issues that it is facing um both from within and from mm. external parties external factions speak to us about the university education paradigm as at now okay i will uh, probably go a little back uh, to the historical moment of uh, of the establishment of higher education sure. in sri lanka it happened before the uh, before we even uh, uh, obtained uh, independence in 48 uh, but uh, in 43 there was the Ka kanangara report mm -hmm. on higher education which was a parliamentary report and they devised uh, uh, the paradigm for uh, the framework for education itself but there was a good segment uh, on uh, higher education and education was seen as an tool to empower the population of this country mm -hmm. and also um, best to i mean create an intelligence yeah that is necessary for the new country the new in independent country and also uh besto i mean give ordinary people a path for s social mobility so they can you know uplift themselves mm. from the you know from wherever they are and also see and and go into different professions but also train themselves in such a way that they can uh, create a become part of the intellectual the intelligence here as a whole you know so you might become a doctor you might become a carpenter but you might also be writing to the newspapers about uh, various things right mm -hmm. uh, or write a book take part in a singing contest uh, uh, but but do it within this understanding of nation building right and it's it's a collective effort there may, may have been problems with it but that was the vision okay. and today what we have is uh, and i feel very strongly about it so today what we have is that vision of a collective effort of uh, nation building is gone right uh, you know it might be somewhere there but the thrust is you just become a cog in the wheel of uh, the labor market right right and you, so you, it's not a collective vision of creating an intelligence here yeah? but of you know people who would do multiple things uh but become a, a, a just a mechanical object uh where you would be just doing the same thing again and again you could become a doctor people could become a ceo okay uh, right but they could also or they could become a clerk or something like but they could also be an be a thinker and be part be in a conversation with other right. forces but today we are our our education is being dumbed down so that we are you know it's about proposal writing or mm. grant writing or uh, presentation okay. uh, you know uh, and only that so we are we are being constantly told that our our curriculum is not matching the needs of the country but when we actually look at the needs of the country uh, what what they're talking about as needs of the country is how do you just become part of the labor force right maybe at higher level because these are university graduates uh, but but the labor force so what are the aspects that were missing uh, is it the critical thinking is it the dreaming is it the believing what are the key elements that our education service 
uh, has opted out of which is detrimental to our school. Okay, yeah, it is the core, it is the dreaming, it, it is the critical thinking that so if you're studying geography for instance mm -hmm. or I mean I mean English but English is a bit different so I am not drawing upon English here so much but if you're studying history or philosophy or geography or something, you will get you will read you will become embedded in that discourse and have a conversation with other geographers maybe right. other historians now what is happening and I, I'm, and it's, it's still happening because the changes have not become so drastic that we are we have completely overhauled it but but increasingly what we are being told is we don't need that geography we need somebody who can be uh, you know who can be a uh, just do some road work mm. uh, you know who can speak English uh, do IT uh, and 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 that geography part is getting less emphasized right uh, you know mm -hmm. I mean and that does not mean our graduates don't know you geography or sh should not be knowing it's still not the change has not still occurred but increasingly we are like doing IT and English uh, and and so on but what is what the problem is we don't learn English that way. We learn English by engaging with uh, with the discourse in geography or with the history. So, so, the, so I don't think the planners even know what how to teach English. Uh, you know, when they say your your graduate is unemployable, this is a big issue. I have, I told you about it yeah. before. So, what they also saying is the arts graduate is unemployable. So, which is very destructive to the morale, the psyche of the arts graduate. I mean, they are being, they are not being treated as people, but as some, some commodities, as an object that's kind of, it is expiry date, something you pick up at a, uh, the supermarket and say, okay, this is useless. Mm -hmm. So, when you say unemployable, you, you're, you're killing that person's soul. Yeah, so this there's a lot of negative messaging around this concept of the unemployable yes. graduate. How do you um, um, how do you deconstruct this 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 conception? Okay, first of all, I mean even before the crisis, we I mean uh, we looked at some st statistics. This was before the economic crisis, and we found that most of the jobs were in. Uh, the government industry and the security force, uh, security, security guards and yeah. the, the security sector. Sure. Not not army, not police, sure, but sure. yeah. Uh, and our graduates are not being equipped for that. Obviously, I mean, we, yes. they don't need a university education uh, to be yes. a. I mean, they need a different kind of uh, skill. Of I mean, course. there's important skill, but you know, you don't have to come to the. US. So I mean. It, 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 there's a total disconnect there. So where are the jobs, and we, and and the available jobs? Where are they? They are in urban centres. Okay. Say Colombo, for instance, Colombo, yeah. Western Province, right? So we are catering to a, the larger, the broader constituency. Yeah. So there's the, the discourse doesn't really the the doesn't address the reality of mm. this country. And after the economic crisis, I mean, 500,000 jobs were lost last year, as we know. So when they say I'm unemployable graduate, they are, I think, focusing on the wrong uh, issue, wrong place. You know, it's the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. You know, they should be okay. What, 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 what are we generating? And today we are having an economic recession, not only nationally, mm -hmm. globally. Right, so so I I think what is happening, and people are, and education is seen. Then, you know, you don't need to know a lot. You just need to pick up a certificate, uh, and uh, do the, you know, and then somehow manage within that and get a job. Right. Part time. I mean, it's part time is going to become more and more an issue I think with mm. this economic uh, problem, the crisis, mm. right? So instead of addressing that, 
they are kind of focusing on uh, you know on the, on the uh, uh, on something that's that needs a different kind of uh, um, approach we are told that we're not born to um, pay bills, work, pay bills, and then die. Um, what more is there to life, and why isn't this messaging going to the students as well? Because the students themselves also need to realize that they they want something better. Uh, stu students know that. At least our students know that, okay. and they are struggling. I mean, they come from the very particularly in my uh, faculty right. the arts faculty they come from very ordinary walks of life i mean their parents might be farmers sure. they might be construction workers mm. right but they have somehow this dream is there right mm. or they may be uh, you know maybe a little uh, upper uh, like teachers children uh, right. lower middle class uh, occupations but they, they, there is a lot of dreaming they know that but when they come and they are told you are, you are not getting a job because something is wrong with you your education mm. then they start wondering right but they, well, when they are in the university they know that they are learning something you know and maybe they are not learning it properly because we are, we are being defunded right today so our classes are big uh, large class the number and we don't have they are not letting us hire more uh, and so there's a lot of uh, uh, pressure on the staff and yeah and then because in the state system uh, there's a lot of uh, pressure on the sta academic community staff where we have to instead of uh, we have to uh, account for our time okay. minutely right right it it's still on paper still it still not come into our very, you know to the everyday life but still we are every week every month i have to say how many hours i have taught mm. and our life is not about just teaching we are marking assignments we are preparing for the lectures and we are in constant dialogue when we are in the university and outside mm -hmm. we are in constant I mean, I'm in dialogue with you right I'm mm -hmm. thinking about the university and I'm formulating I mean none of this is taken into account so it we we, it, we are being treated and and it's not necessarily a bad thing but we are tr being treated like uh, machines who have to kind of eight to four what did you do right uh, and 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 by doing that we are spending a lot of time trying to account for it and not our <laughs> primary duty which is teaching sure i have to do a lot more paperwork today right. and there's innumerable committees mm. right uh, because audit is asking something ugc is asking something ministry is asking something all not not very enriching right they're more about okay now have you got this um, have you got your quality assurance in place so everybody's like put a committee mm. and work on it and that those five people are working hard for that committee which is actually a lot and not very meaningful right uh, right yeah but they spend a lot of time because you have to fill in you have to develop the criteria you have to and you have to implement it and where is the teaching to be so I am okay because I'm a kind of very senior in the uh, sector in my faculty so I don't get into the committees very much sure but I see the junior staff mm -hmm. being pulled into all this and they are the people who need to do research Right. Who need to be ro doing and uh, you know exploring their disciplines and okay. that's not happening. That's not. Uh, they are still doing it. Yeah, it's not but, effective. Uh, uh, but they they need to do it more, right? I right. mean, that should be their primary goal. Sure. Not being in a committee because the ministry, higher education ministry, has asked us to do mm. something. Not because audit has asked us to do something. Mm. You okay. know, not because some uh, polytechnic somewhere is uh, introducing a course and so we have to now be in competition with that uh, you know and uh, see and account for our existence
Right. We are in conversation uh, with uh, Professor uh, Sumathi Sivamohan. We're going for a short commercial break. We'll be right back. People's Platform. TV One. TV for Life. China delivers two Harbin Vi-12 planes to the Sri Lanka Air Force. Sri Lanka's army commander holds talks with Indian counterpart. Spike in dengue cases. Over 250 cases recorded daily. Teachers and principals launch joint protest along Parliament Road demanding solutions to their issues. Nine killed due to Cyclone Mijuan in India. Over 10,000 people in relief camps. TV One TV Life. Inflation, exchange rates and the rise and fall of the stock market. Bringing you insights into the business world. Watch the business buzz every Tuesday at 9.30pm on TV1. People's Platform. Welcome back. You're watching the People's Platform. We're in conversation with uh, Professor Sumathi Siva Mohan on democratizing the practice of higher education as a national resource in Sri Lanka. Um, Professor, the special select committee appointed to look into developing uh, higher education has recommended the abolition of the University Grants Commission and to replace it with an independent higher nas uh, a national higher education commission, which is to be enacted by new legislation. Speak to us about about the varied implications of this uh, proposal, if it goes through, uh, from your perspective? Yes, okay, thank you for that question. Uh, the UGC uh, was first uh, um, established uh, as a financial body originally, 78, you know, to, to mm -hmm. disburse uh, the finances to the various campuses and later universities. And then it be t took on a more administrative and a monitoring, uh, administrative role. Mm -hmm. uh, regulatory uh, also? The, yeah, regulatory, the circulars, mm -hmm. all, you know, the ministry circulars are c kind of, they, they, they probably uh, mediate uh, between the universities and the, and the ministry. Uh, it, so it has remained, I mean, it, it has also become a bit of, a bit of, a, a not bit. It has become a puppet of the ministry, uh, you know, over the years, right. and there are lots of problems. Uh, but at the same time, despite all that, it is a state body, and is made up of uh, academics, mm -hmm. right? So the standing committees, we have representation in the standing committees. You know, the chairperson is usually somebody who is from the, uh, from the academic community. So there is a, uh, there's an understanding of the issues. Right. You know, uh, I mean, all, very often we are at loggerheads with the UGC. Nevertheless, it's a state body and it's, an, it's a semi, it's an academic body as well. Hmm. Uh, because we have representation. Okay. at many levels. Right. Now with the new um, commission uh, that's proposed, councillor commission, right? We are no longer the, uh, the body, uh, what what's happening is there's going to be a disconnect. We are going to lose that connection with this body because it's no longer a purely state body. It will be appointed by the state. but. The both non-state higher education institutes and state institutes are going to 
we brought together and we placed on par with you know each other and the members of the council or commission are going to be drawn from a variety of sectors and that would mean they would not necessarily be accountable to us or to the people or to the state uh, so we will lose that direct connection to the the commission so if you have like uh, somebody from the corporate sector this is what we fear and given the levels of corruption in this country you know we do you know who, how they they probably will bring uh measures right regulations that will not be uh, beneficial to us at all because we we have no say any longer in 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 uh, in ter terms of a curriculum we are, we are you losing that even now but this will be at a greater and deeper uh, uh, level right. to a great, much greater extent and we will be forced to compete with uh higher education institutes that do not have the kind of mandate that we have to serve the largest number of people in this country you know and we have kept that independence uh, that that goal uh you know uh until now we have kept that in sight that vision and so we now get our students almost 99% through the UGC through the Z score or through the advanced level but with this new commission you know we might have lat you know they might force lateral entry which we had been resisting for a long time yeah but this is all uh, still in proposal form yeah it is still in proposal form but we we have been we, we what we have envisioning is what we have also be, we we are experiencing now the pressure to have lateral entry which we resisted mm -hmm. you know through through do, doing other courses you can come in okay uh, we we are experiencing that right. that that pressure and some departments are kind of slightly given way you know given into that okay so there's there's a there's a risk that the qualitative aspect might be affected yeah and the unfair unjust mm. uh, uh, system you know i mean i i we have to be careful the a level system i can't say it's very fair you know i mean some of the best students and some of the more hard working students may not get it right but still it is at the moment the the only criterion that gives a certain amount of justice to all the students you know sure. you, you know i mean equity yeah in mm. terms of um, uh, that equality yeah that the terms of a fair play we don't have you know i don't take a student because their father is a doctor or something like sure <laughs> of course <laughs> right so th this will and then also so that is individually uh, it's a bit, a bit on the kind of uh, subjective side but what about free living we have our our student we are free we are a free education system mm. but with this we are going to be experimenting with fee living fees because there's going to be a lot of because we are no longer governed by a purely state institution the ugc we are going to be it, it is it's actually private it's not about a private university the the uh, the attempt now is to privatize state university which is uh, but there is nothing on paper right uh, as as at this moment it's still in proposal form yeah but we are experiencing that and i will tell you we have an external degree we 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 right. peradeni and many universities yeah. have external degrees and when peradeni was the first to start an external degree it's there in uh, the arts yeah. stream and the science streams it was it it uh, was started as a service to sure. to people working people who have missed out on uh, getting a degree for a variety of reasons you know maybe they were playing the fool when they were young or they had to look after their family and they couldn't right so it was increasingly it's becoming a, a money making thing there's an immense uh, lot of pressure on us to make it raise the fees 
for that. Not only that, the new the new uh, directives are forcing us to start an external degree that is taught. Mm -hmm. And me and uh, some others in my university, in my uh, faculty are resisting that. So if you have an external degree, and this is now in place, uh, we're still not doing it, right? right? But uh, proposals have come and, you know, I mean, we are being asked to divide, design courses. So what is going to happen is, I'm talking about my university, but I think this is happening in other universities too. It's already happening. We are going to have a taught program that is free and we are going to have a taught program, full time taught program, that's not free. So we are going to have run two parallel programs. I don't know, this is foolish on many other counts, foolhardy, because where is the time hmm. uh, for this? Where are we going to find the time for the teachers to write? So I think we are running out of time. But So this already in, in there. And so why, what we are, these, these commissions are trying to form, in, are an attempt to formalize that. Have any discussions been had with the policymakers? It's been, FOTA has had, I mean the trade union, we have had, I have had some time back, we have had with uh, some parliamentarians. Right. In 2000, wait, when was that? 2017, 2016, a group of us went to see the parliamentarians and there was an oversight committee on uh, making Sightum, the paradigm for all, all of us. Mm -hmm. There was the, you know, mm -hmm. the, taking sightum paradigm and using it for the entire university. So we went, we were very, uh, we thought that was a very dangerous document. So few of us went to, uh, went to the parliament, the oversight committee. Don't you think that even for this issue, um, academics we need are to trying. engage with we, we, very directly yes, the policy makers. We are trying, but uh, are the policy makers willing to listen to us? I mean, are they, are they even giving us a... Uh, I think the conversations think. definitely need to be had because these kinds of proposals can't be brought in without direct but consultation. That, that's what is happening, right? I mean, are we, are we being consulted, not just the academics, but anyone else? I mean, other other sectors are they being labor reforms? Are they being uh, other other workers um, uh, being consulted on labor reforms that are come you know that are being put in place? Uh, they are not, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we are not being and slow little by little nobody is will be getting consulted so so we would love to have uh, uh, I belong to a, I think I told you before I belong to a Kupi a collective, Kupi collective mm -hmm. and we have been writing uh, so you have written to the minister and, uh, of justice regarding this issue my memory is easy no I don't think we have but I so some of us have had programs like this right right and repeatedly mm. the FOTA during the Aragalia period FOTA the trade union released proposals mm. uh, for e economic and political reform and one of the reforms was about higher education mm. that uh, how it should be handled right so and it was released to the public and released to the government but then that was during the Aragalia right and uh, yeah so we are constantly talking, but I think we also should talk to the people because there is a lot of misconception about higher education. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you for uh, coming in for this um, conversation, uh, Professor Sumati Siva Mohan. This was lovely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Good night.